We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. All right, folks, welcome back here uh, after practice with myself, Lake Lewis. We're here at uh, Hooters in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, we were here last week. I had a great time. Uh, Morgan Moses, who does this with me every other Friday, as you know, this is a daily podcast, but every other Friday, Morgan Moses, starting right tackle for the Redskins, comes out with me. He was injured last week and unfortunately hasn't been able to make it out. I, he apologized to the people here at Hooters and said that he will be back here, uh, hopefully as early as next week. So we We'll have Morgan Moses here with me. Uh, two weeks ago, we had Adrian Peterson come out. We also had Ricky Irving, you know, who won a Super Bowl with the Redskins, came out. So we're going to mix it up and have a lot of the young guys that we're getting ready to talk about here in a second come out here at Hooters. But right now, I'm sitting with the hospitality manager here, Tony Moser. Uh, you know, first and foremost, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. We're glad uh, to have you here. We appreciate uh, the service here. We're expecting a lot more Redskins fans to come out throughout the night. But this gentleman right here was talking to me off the air just as far as his knowledge of the team and his excitement for the young players on the Redskins. Uh, you know, Terry McLaurin, uh, you know, Steven Sims, Kelvin Harmon, Dwayne Haskins. How excited are you to get to next year already? I mean, as I told you when we were talking off mic, mm -hmm. it's really uh, a fresh feeling to be heading into the offseason and know where we're going to be starting with quarterback at the beginning yes. of the year. Yes. And to know that we got this group of young guys, they're excited. They're exciting, and it's going to be fun to watch next year. When you look at Dwayne Haskins, do you did you see development each and every week? Every week. I'm not going to lie to you. That first week he was in there, you know, he didn't have the best game. And, um, you know, it was a little bit of doubt. But every week you've seen noticeable improvement. Noticeable. And this past week he was he was on fire, man. He was before he got hurt. Eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean – and you know, I got no problem with us resting him, making sure he's ready to go for next season. That's an investment we got to take care of, and it's going to pay off big time for us. I think. So you didn't have a problem with Dan Snyder telling him not to play? No, nah, man. <laughs> when, when you're in any type of management, you're supposed to protect your investments. Absolutely. And we got a lot in this kid, and I really think that um, he's going to be a big part of our team for a long time to come. One of the big questions that I've thrown out there quite a bit over the past few weeks is, Maybe not just in wins and losses, but as far as game preparation and as far as just, just you know, playing hard, Bill Callahan seemed to have done something right with these guys. Do you think the Redskins should give him a hard look to perhaps get that interim label taken off? You know, I would have no problem with Callahan staying on. It's obvious that these players are responding to him. Mm -hmm. uh, they're performing. And, I mean, we've, as we said, we've been in the games, you know. Callahan has produced results fast. Yeah. Yeah, and they're physical, uh, the, the, the offsides, the penalties, they've pretty much dropped to a premium. So, you know, I think right now if you're the Washington Redskins fan base, you have to feel pretty good about at least the product on the field. Defensively, I thought they could have played a lot better. I, I don't know if, you know, Greg Mineski is a guy that I would bring back personally. I think I probably would go a different direction. But overall, I think that there are some coaches, you know, and Ike Hilliard, I tweeted about him earlier, I think they really need to find a way to retain him and also Kevin O'Connell. Well, I fully agree. Like, you look at what he's done with those rookie receivers, I don't think anybody expected no. uh, what we got out of those guys. And just putting the right people in the places, give them a chance to shine, and they really have, you know. Um, as far as the defense, like you said, I feel like we have a lot of talent on our defense, and it's just not being utilized the way it should. Right. So I kind of agree with you. If we see a change there, I think we could see a, you know, a total transformation. Um, I've always said I think that they have the personnel to go to a 4-3 and get out of that dreaded 3-4 that a lot of teams like to run. But I think with the Redskins, if you look at the strength of their defense, it's their front four. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe front five, you add in uh, Tim Settle. So I think if you're a coach, you know, if you're an Urban Meyer, if you're a young guy like an Eric Bieniemy that wants to get a head coaching job, are the Redskins a team that you look at from a talent standpoint, or do you need to make sure that that front office is kind of cleaned up? You know what, for me, I think that – a lot of people look down on the Redskins franchise and they say, why would any coach want to go there? But I truly think that a lot of these coaches can look at it as an opportunity to be the guy that righted the ship, pull the nose up on this thing. And if you look at it, there, there's some talent in our coaching staff maybe that um, really should get a chance to be maintained. Sure. Uh, and depending on who, who you would bring in, obviously, you know, as you said, if you brought in Urban Meyer, he's going to write his own ticket, you know. But um, I don't have any problem with that. I think that... Uh, 
it's a, it's a major opportunity now for somebody to come in here and turn this fan base around, turn the team around, and bring us back to where we used to be in the glory days. And, I mean, you know, you think about most coaches want to come in, if not draft a quarterback, they want to inherit a young one that has a lot of potential. Dwayne Haskins has all of those things. Yeah, I think that's why these last couple of games that he played in were very important for him to show out, and he really did. He, he did everything we asked him to do. Mm -hmm. Any coach can look at him right now and see, you know, hey, there's something there. Folks, right now I'm talking with uh, Tony Moser, the hospitality manager here at Hooters in Fairfax. If you haven't been here, you've got to come out. The venue is wonderful. Uh, it's great. It's just, you know, when I came in last week, I was expecting the Hooters that I did some shows with in the past, and this is not it. This is definitely first class, first rate. The food's good on top of that. The, the waiters, waitresses, everyone's great. Um, you know, this is, this is an exciting time for you guys. You guys have put a lot into this and it shows. It is. Um, we're really um, glad that you see that. Hooters has done a lot as a company to make some changes over the years. Uh, we're right here in Fairfax, Redskins country. Come out and see the world famous Hooter girls. Come out and sample our food. You know, we got what you want. We have all the games on when you're ready to see it, but we're playing that Redskins sound on Sundays. Yeah, how, how does this place get during the season? Is it it's, packed? It's good. It's good. Um, this, it's a Redskins area right here. When I first came to Hooters, uh, they started me out in the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, and I told them this isn't going to work out. <laughs> you got to get me to Redskins country. And, I mean, the uh, Ravens yeah. are doing pretty well up there, yeah. though, so I'm sure they're doing quite well. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things that I, 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 I keep telling people is that the Redskins have the number two pick right now. You know, if they win in Dallas, you know, that could change. They could drop all the way down to four. You know, Detroit, some other teams doing some things. I don't know if that's going to happen considering that today at practice we were told that, you know, uh, Josh Norman, Monte Nicholson, Dwayne Haskins, Terry McLaurin, uh, Landon Collins, all these guys are inactive for Sunday. The chances of them beating Dallas have decreased, and I'm thinking if you're a fan that wants that number two pick, the odds are looking pretty good for you right now. Yeah, th that's true, but also you look at Coach Callahan and how important it is him to him to beat a divisional opponent. And he knows from being here how important that game is. It might be the last game of the season. We might be playing for nothing, but it's Dallas week, and everybody gets up for Dallas week. You know, I wish the rivalry was what it used to be, though. I mean, obviously you have to – you have to be competing for something. So, you know, although some of the frontline players aren't playing, you still have a chance to inflict major damage to Dallas and their hopes to reach the postseason. That's you, not bad. <laughs> you look at Case and you look at um, the Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy <laughs> is still beloved here for beating Dallas, you know. Oh, yeah. He went in there and he won that game for us. Yeah, so yeah. Case has the chance this week to go in there and do that for us. You become a folk legend if you go beat Dallas in Dallas. Oh, I tell you what, if they go in there and Case has a great game and they beat Dallas and knock them out, uh, I think there are going to be people that are going to be clamoring for Case to be re-signed to come back and be Dwayne's backup for next year. I have no problem with that. <laughs> See, you're already one of them. Uh, if I were to ask you for the defensive side of the ball, mm -hmm. who stands out? Who, who would you probably give your MVP to? Well, you, even though he was hurt a little bit, I think that Deron Payne really stands out as a leader on mm -hmm. that defense. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. And you saw in the last week's game, he's, he's a major impact. He we is. got that Alabama wall there. Uh, there are some players you'd like to see more more out of. Uh -huh. Obviously, we brought in Collins this year, and maybe um, maybe if we did adjust to that 4-3, you'd see a lot of defensive guys on our team you know, showing, showing yeah. more. Yeah, I agree. Uh, on offense, I'm not – so we, we talked about Terry McLaurin. You know, Adrian Peterson, for me, was my MVP this year. I fully agree. Uh, Adrian Peterson is constant. He, he, we ask him to deliver, and he delivers every time we give him the ball. And I, I really, you know, it, having Adrian Peterson on this team is such a, a blessing, you know, and it's great that we have him to count on. You know, we have the ability now to get out in that lead in the first half yeah. and have AP put that game to bed, you know. And, you know, you and I were talking off the air. And, yeah, I'm going to bring it up again, folks, but we were quite salty <laughs> and as far as Adrian being inactive. And, I mean, for me, that, that sealed Jay's fate. It, it was just a bad look. Most Redskins fans weren't happy about it. Some people kept, you know, were coming at me and saying that, you know, I'm defending Adrian and that they had to make the move. They needed another special teams guy or another tight end. No, I'll never accept that. No, I agree. You know, um, we have Adrian Peterson here, who is an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer. He's he's going to be, you know, a Redskins legend, even if he's only here for three years. He's not going to go in the Hall of Fame as a Redskin probably, but still – 
we are never going to forget Adrian Peterson being here and what he gave to us. And it's kind of kind of like with our franchise, you know, the way things been, it's been a little bit, uh, a little bit shaky every now and then. Sure. I remember when we brought Adrian Peterson in and we were going to give him that tryout game in the preseason. I said, I got to be at this game <laughs> to see Adrian Peterson in a Redskins jersey because who knows what's going to happen, you know. And luckily we were smart enough to sign him. And we got him next year again. And, I mean, I think that that's really – if you look, we have uh, Thompson, you know, and we got, we got some good guys, guys in the backfield. Yeah. Uh, we drafted Love, right? Yeah. Um, but the, the constant is Adrian Peterson. Absolutely. And if you give him that ball, he's going to go out there and he's going to give you 100 yards a game. And I think what he's done is a lot of people don't really look at this, but Adrian Peterson has shown the Terry McLaurins and the Steven Sims and the Calvin Harmons what a true professional looks like. You know, this is a guy that practices injured, doesn't take days off. They, they gave him a veteran's day off towards the end of the year. Every, every week he had one day off, but he still was out there, you know. You remember last season when it was towards the end of the season, we were bringing in guys off the street, and the, you know, the, everybody was saying, has, has Jay lost the locker room and this and that? And I remember specifically Adrian Peterson standing up in that locker room and saying, I'm going to go out there and play hard this week, no matter what. And you heard those young guys on the team saw Adrian Peterson, and that's that. you can't buy that. You know, that's a leader. Oh, yeah. And he says all the time that, you know, there's tape of you. So even if you're winning or losing or tying, there's tape of your performance. And if you think that you can dog it here because you'll go somewhere else, uh, you guys can't think that way because other coaches see that too, and they don't want to pick up bad habits. They don't want to bring bad habits to their team. I will say this to Redskins fans, some good news is after practice today, you know, I did, I talked with Adrian and um, talked to him about coming out here, and he, he said he would love to do that. Uh, but, but more importantly, he said that he wants to be here. And, and that's a big deal. I mean, he's excited about these young guys. He sees what's going on. Uh, you know, I talked with Kevin O'Connell, and I asked him, where this team was in preseason, did you think that the offense could become this dynamic? And he made a good point. He said, well, at the time, he thought they were going to be depending on, you know, the Jordan Reeds of the world. At the time, Josh Doxson was in preseason. He said, but going forward to looking at where they are now, he never would have envisioned that they would become this explosive. Yeah, too many times over the last couple seasons, you heard the head coach say, well, the game became one-dimensional quickly, and we, we didn't have any option. But you see what that running game has done for the passing game. It, it oh, opens man. it up. And, you and that see, was Callahan. Yeah, big that time, was man. the first thing he said when he became coach was, we want to be known as a running team. And we want to be known as a physical team that, go, that wants to go downhill. And you look at that, you can't beat that. You really can't. Yeah, I remember another coach that used to say that, and he brought a few trophies here, you know. Joe Gibbs changed his whole offense. Remember, he came in wanting to pass, came from San Diego, Eric Correa, all that, and he changed the whole dynamic of this team when he saw that he had a monster named John Riggins, you know, running behind that offensive line. So 44 was going to run on you, and there's nothing you could do. Well, I think that's the other key thing before we wrap up here, talking with Tony Moser, hospitality manager here at Hooters of Fairfax. Uh, I'm Lake Lewis, of course, cover the Washington Redskins. You can check me out also uh, from time to time on ABC Channel 7 as their Redskins insider. You know, Jay Gruden was a guy that I, again, and this isn't to bash Jay, but I just thought Jay was set in what he wanted to accomplish. And we didn't see a lot of adjustments at halftime. We didn't see a whole lot of things that changed in his game approach. Callahan, I, I've seen that. And I've seen this team come out in the third quarter of games and actually go down the field. They started to, you know, look like a more cohesive unit under him. It's a fresh feeling for us. Um and it's, again, like I said, it's fun to watch. Even with them not winning these last couple of games, it's fun to see them in, in it until the last minute because it gives you hope. Like, you know, like, I'm not saying we're close to a Super Bowl, but we are close to winning some games. In this division, we're close to maybe winning that division again. And it's, it's going to be fun. And, you know, I, as a Maryland Redskins fan, you see a lot of uh, fans now. Uh, turning to purple, and they're yeah. going over to the Ravens. The Ravens are dy- dynamic, and it's fun to watch. But I'm telling you, in another year or two, we're going to be just as fun to watch. I appreciate that. Well, look, uh, Scott was good, man. You know, I felt like I might, I might have to step my game up with my job, man. You might come after my job here. But, uh, you know, we again, we enjoy being out here. Uh, we've had a great time, you know, and as the season ends on Sunday, you know, we kind of jump to the forefront a little bit here at our sports journey because, you know, we have a chance to bring these guys out and, and fans are going to want to know their every word, especially with some coaching changes coming up. So look forward to being back here with you in the near future. And we look forward. We're happy to have you. We look forward to working together in the future.
Hail to the Redskins. All right, folks. We'll be back. So welcome back uh, to the After Practice Podcast with myself, Lake Lewis. And uh, we've been coming out here. This is our second week here at Hooters here in Fairfax. Uh, you can check me out on uh, ABC Channel 7 as a Redskins insider uh, and also uh, one of the Redskins beat reporters. I'm sitting here now with a fan, you know, uh, Mr. Steve Fox, who's uh, been a Redskins fan. He said his whole life. I have to ask you, you know, just what I asked, uh, you know, uh, Tony Moser, the GM here. Are you excited about what you're seeing from this team, from some of the young players? Cautiously optimistic. Okay. That, I mean, that's fair. Would I, you say you were a month ago? A little bit less. Okay. Not, not much. I was uh, optimistic. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Haskins. Okay. Uh, the receivers are just, wow. Somebody gets a pat on the back for that draft. Well, see, that's, that's the big issue that's going to happen here because we're pretty sold that on Monday there's going to be some wholesale changes in the building. Uh, you know, that there may be, you know, rampant change. I'm asking this question, though. When Jay Gruden was fired and Bill Callahan came in as the interim coach, I started to see this team compete. They started, I mean, they've been in every game. I've seen a lot of development in some of the younger players. Would you like to see Bill Callahan be considered, you know, to be brought back as the full-time coach? Wow, that's hard. <laughs> that's why we put it up there. <laughs> uh. You know, I'd probably reserve a decision on what the other possibilities were. Because Callahan, there's no question that he's earned the right to, uh, in my mind, to at a minimum interview for the job. Yeah, he's, he's, I agree. He's earned that right by, by what he's gotten out of the team, the, uh, the turnaround from Jay. And I, and I was and still am a Jay fan. I don't know what the, the disconnect was there, but uh, – I was a Jay supporter for years, and uh, a lot of fans used to kill me for that and say, you know, <laughs> I was drinking the Kool-Aid. But, you know, I thought Jay lost the team this year. And I tell you, the defining moment where he lost the team was when he sat Adrian Peterson. First game. And there's just nothing you can – Yeah. You, I, you, you can't know, fix that. No, you know, and I'd love to hear uh, – I'd, I'd love to hear his, his side of it. Oh, I, I'll know? tell you what his side was. He told us in the media room, he said that the team – because they had an injury, they had to bring up a special teams player. And so they signed Wendell Smallwood, who ironically had played in Philadelphia. We thought that that was just one of those moves teams make to get someone that knows you know, the team's playbook. Right. But no, they brought him in because they thought he was going to be a really good contributor on special teams. And he had a pretty good game that first game. But I don't care about Wendell Smallwood and what he can do on special teams. Right. Adrian Peterson's a first ballot Hall of Famer who last year playing behind four different quarterbacks had 1,100 yards. Yes. I wasn't happy with the fact that Adrian Peterson wasn't even named the starter to go into the season. Big Darius Geis fan. He's a great kid, and he's going to be a tremendous talent. But I thought that he hadn't earned that spot yet. That should have been Adrian's, and then you just work those guys collectively. I agree 100%. Uh, man's a uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. Beyond question, a stand-up human being. Um, he deserved better. Okay. Without question. Um, and and I, would, I would love to have seen Jay handle it different. Yeah, and I think that was the, the, the coffin, you know, the nail in the coffin, so to speak. Obviously, five weeks later, we know he was fired, you know, after the New England game. I'm going to post something at you. You know, we'll try to switch gears here, have a little bit of fun with this. We'll have to be so serious. This guy's a longtime Redskins fan. So uh, when I was the uh, senior Redskins guy for USA Today, I actually uh, wrote an article about my top five Redskins. People are like, first of all, you're not qualified because you're too young. Well, I'm not as young as you may think I am. <laughs> but regardless, you know, if you cover something, you have to know the history of it. And I think I know this history of this team – just about as well as anyone. So we're going to put you to the test there. You tell me if you agree with my top five Washington Redskins of all time. Naturally, you're going to agree, disagree with five because it's two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had to. I had to stick two at the five spot. 
And those two guys were John Riggins and Art Monk. I just could not separate one of them and not have them on the list. Nah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So we're, we're starting off good here. Number four was a gentleman by the name of Charlie Taylor. We're on the same page. Okay. All right. All right. And before I go to the other three, I have to make sure that you understand because some people were telling me Kenny Houston wasn't on that list. And I said that because do you consider him a redskin? Because he had history with some other teams. He did. And a um, lot of these guys I'm naming, they, they pretty much played their bulk of their careers redskins. Uh, you're absolutely right so far. I consider Kenny a redskin, but – and, and primarily for one single play. Of course, okay. Walt Garrison. Walt Garrison. I got you. At the end zone. Yep. Uh, I, was, uh, I was a ticket taker for the Redskins at that time. And, nice. And got to go to the games. We've had – our families had season tickets since Griffith Stadium. So uh, – That's all right. That's that all was, right. Uh, that was that, – that play is burned into my memory. So just to let you know that I have to know what I'm doing – that play happened. I was one years old. So, yeah, I had to do my, my research. So, yes. Uh, okay, so number three. This one surprised a lot of people. I mean, I guess younger folks had no idea who I was talking about. But my number three Redskin of all time was Chris Hanberger, Absolutely. middle linebacker. 55, the originator of the clothesline. Okay, all right, all right. So, see, we're on the same page here. A lot of people don't know this. You can go to the Pro Bowl, and you can be an All-Pro. All-Pro is the highest level. Correct. This guy was a seven-time All-Pro. Yeah. So that means he was recognized as one of the best at all times. Correct. Okay. Number two, this is where it got tricky to a lot of people, and you already know the two guys at the end. So number two was slinging Sammy Ball. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. All right. And I had him. People were like, wait a minute. He played before they had you know, TV. He was on reels. But this guy was really one of the first forward passers. Yep. He also was a great punter. He changed one of, the league. He did. He changed the league in the way he played. So he goes on that list. And then number one, I thought it was fairly easy. It was Daryl Green. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Played 19 years here. Yeah. Uh, was a perennial pro bowler. Recognized as probably one of the top two or three fastest players in the history of football. Uh, and, and, you know, he was a guy that was instrumental during their heyday, you yep. know, under Joe Gibbs. So Absolutely. So my top five is good enough for you? Oh, no question. Anyone I missed in your mind? Oh, no. Missed is the wrong word. Okay. All right. Okay. Because we get five people in the room. We might get 25 different top fives. Right. 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 You know, and, and it's not meaning any of them are wrong. Right. For, for me personally, number one would be Sonny Jurgensen. Okay. Yeah. Sonny, and I, was, and Sonny was my is my all time favorite Redskin, um, but you know I saw him in warm ups one time when I was a little kid throw the ball behind his back sixty yards. <laughs> wow! Okay. Wow! And, and he, had, he had beer gut. You know, <laughs> in those days there was no none of this working out in the off season. You worked out on the can. <laughs> those guys they didn't make enough money. They had jobs in the off. They season. sure did. They sure did. No, but that's no. You can't. I can't dispute. Oh no, and that's your, yeah. Your well, the, and and like I said, that disclaimer earlier was the reason why I didn't have Sonny because you're right. I had a lot of people saying no Sonny Jurgensen, uh, no Pat Fisher, yeah. uh, and there was someone else that I uh, that came from another team. Uh, one one guy said Larry Brown. Larry Brown. But I thought Larry Brown's career was game. short, though. Yeah. You know, he was yeah, a violent injuries. runner. Yeah, Hurt him bad. but Sonny Jurgensen definitely. Sonny Jurgensen, I mean, you know, he, he had a run in Philly before he came here. Yeah, I uh, came here. So I'll ask you this: This is, you know, you you remember this as a lifelong fan. Had Sonny been able to play in the Super Bowl against the Dolphins, <laughs> would they have won that game? <laughs> of course they would have. <laughs> okay, I mean, how did I expect oh, you I to know. say you know, anything it's, differently? It's, they were favored going into that game regardless I, I against an undefeated team. Yeah. I love speculation. You okay. Know, <laughs> we, we never know. Allen would have uh, – Allen – Sonny was not Allen's type of player. Okay. Okay. You know? Okay. I didn't know. So now I'm learning something. Yeah. And what, what would you say the reason for that was? Uh, Flamboyant or anything like that? Yeah, or? Sonny was uh, – 
Sonny would sneak out of the dorms in Carlisle at, <laughs> at night. And oh, go neat, get neat, yeah, need I say more? Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and George, you know, love him to death. He between Lomb that one year with Lombardi and then bringing uh, when Cook brought uh, Allen in there, it, uh -huh. it turned the whole franchise around. It, it started winning for a change. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, I tell people if you're 35 or under, and obviously I'm older than that. But I tell people, if you're 35 or under, you really don't know the Redskins to oh, be no. anything. No. And and there was a time in the 70s, you know, even though in the 70s they they lost in the Super Bowl, they still were a team that always competed to get in the playoffs. And then naturally in the 80s, Joe Gibbs comes over, and over I think a 12-year span, they were in four Super Bowls. Yep. It's it's just remarkable to, to see how far the organization's fallen, and hopefully – you know, Monday or Tuesday of next week. You know, everyone told me today, I know you're, you're happy that season's over after, after Sunday's game, but today was officially the last practice. So I did my stand-up in the bubble, and I'm like, yeah, this is the last practice, but it's just about to start. <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be some changes that are going to happen, and uh, I'm going to ask you this. I, I don't sugarcoat this. I don't sugarcoat this when I'm on TV. Do you think it's time for Bruce Allen to go? Yeah. Okay. Only, only because I'm not going to blame it on him, but, and I don't know that there's anybody out there that could, that could make Mr. Snyder feel comfortable enough to let them run the team and, and stay out of it. And that's been my assessment from day one. You know, when people say Dan Snyder's the problem and he's been in the way, no, he's not. He's uh He's, he's a guy with a lot of money that loves his, his team, and he spent money. He's I mean, he brought in – yeah, he brought in Josh Norman. He spent money, and he outbid people to get players in. But he's not tackling people out there. He's not missing coverages. You know the, the irony about Dan Snyder? I'm going to say as much as 85% of the moves that he made, mm -hmm. at the time he made them, they look great. They're bringing Bruce Smith here, bringing Deion Sanders in here. At the time he made the move, and none of them worked out. Right. But at the time he made the move, it said, wow, okay. Trading up to uh, to get RG3. Yeah. I mean, that paid off RG3's rookie year. He was rookie of the year. They yeah. went to the playoffs. Uh, still safe for all intents and purposes. They had Seattle on the ropes. They just needed to land one more punch, and yeah. that, that game was over. Yeah. And then, obviously, Roberts injured, fortunes changed. And then you reset yourself. You have Kirk Cousins. I've never been a huge Kurt Cousins guy. I mean, he's a great human being, one of the nicest guys I've ever interviewed. But I just thought, you know, numbers sometimes say a little different from the results as far as wins and losses. With that said, though, you could have had Kurt really cheap. But you waited it out. You tried to play hardball. And obviously he's not upset because he signed the biggest contract in the history of football for a quarterback. So, Hey, I'm not mad at him, no. but but the Redskins could have had him for pennies to the dollar compared to what he signed with Minnesota, and I relate that back to to Bruce Allen. One thing I will say is Bruce Allen has taken a lot of credit for the things that the Redskins have done well. It hasn't been that much, but whatever it was, he took credit for it. So naturally, you got to take the to, you Absolutely. know you've yeah. got to take the fall. Can't have one without the other. <laughs> Absolutely. So good stuff, folks. Uh, here. For, uh, Steve Fox, and, yeah. um, you know, just a lifelong Redskins fan. This is what we're doing here at Hooters. Uh, Morgan Moses, starting right tackle, comes out with me uh, to do these. But Morgan has a little bit of an injury. Yeah. Can't, I can't I talk on, too uh, much about it, but, yes. I heard him with the junkies yesterday. Yes, so he's uh, – Actually this morning. And he's going to play. And I, I, and I said it the other day on Channel 7. I told, told the world out there that, that Morgan is without question. And I said, you can quote me, he is playing – told me today in the locker room he is playing um but nevertheless he will be back out here with me when we're back out here so i appreciate you coming on you did a well, great thank job you. thank you for having me all right folks we'll take a quick break when we come back more right here after practice with myself lake lewis hang tight welcome back uh to after practice podcast with myself lake lewis uh beat reporter for the redskins tv analyst on channel seven Big redskins time. insider so i'm trying man i'm trying <laughs> uh you know we're gonna be out here frequently you know, normally I'm here with uh, right tackle, starting right tackle, Morgan Moses. Morgan has his injury, couldn't make it out tonight. Uh, but this is what we normally do. And 
have a friend of mine who came out to show some support, and he has a pretty good podcast that he does. Uh, Mr. Wole Akinso, you yes, know, yes. what's going on, my friend? What's going on, my man? Uh, you can check out, you know, Urban uh, Sports Scene. I go on there with him from time to time as well. And, uh, you know, we've had some pretty uh, interesting <laughs> conversations. He's also covers the Redskins, and uh, I see him up in the press box all the time. Yeah. Sits right next to me. <laughs> and we have made no bones about the fact that we are big uh, – Jerry Judy fans from yes, Alabama. Are. Yes, we are. <laughs> but Went this, for Judy. Yeah, but, but <laughs> and this guy's been saying for the longest time they've they've got to win. They've I mean, and then if they have to lose to get them, so whatever the scenario is for this football team to get this kid from Alabama, Wole Harris, he, this is what he wants. So, I I, I mean, let's be realistic. Yeah, here, of course, though. of course. The chances, and I can't come out and say this team's going to lose Sunday. Yeah. But when you see all these front line players that aren't playing, starting quarterback, starting wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh, you know, AP still playing. Yes. Which gives them a chance. But they're playing against a, should be a desperate Dallas team that yeah. has to win in order to, you know, they need some help from the Eagles to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. My question to you, though, is that number two looks like it's probably going to be solidified. Yes. Yeah. If you have the number two pick, I mean, <laughs> just, just let's, for this football team, yeah, okay. are you seriously saying that you still would draft Judy over Chase Young? I and would, it's okay. No, I mean, if you no, do. no, no, I'll be real. I would say Judy because I think that Judy's an impact player. Uh, when you look at this team, what you're building with Dwayne, Dwayne's the starting quarterback for this Washington Redskins team, and you want to make it easy for him. Yes. You already have McLaren, stud. Looks like he could be a bona fide number one. Yes. Why not pair him with another guy that could be a bona fide number one, too, as well? And then you got Steven Sims Jr., you got Harmon, now you have depth with that. You know what I mean? And okay. then again, and, and also, we got to look at this situation. The Skins had a guy named Preston Smith. And now he's in Green Bay, has multiple sacks, right? Yeah, multiple. In, a different, in a different system, yes. right? We, you got Montez Sweat. A lot of people are saying, like, you know what? We, we thought we, he would have been better. All right. You got Ryan Kerrick on the other side. Who's to say if you bring in a guy like Chase Young that will get the full value of Chase Young? Because at the end of the day, this team's going to feel like they owe, it to, they owe it to Ryan Kerrigan to still play outside. You just drafted a kid in Montez Sweat. Again, unless you get rid of Kerrigan, I feel like bringing Chase Young to, to the fold will be difficult for him because I see a rotation happening. And I don't know you get the best out of Chase Young with a rotation. Well, this is the thing. I mean, I think you – we're neither one of us are Minuski guys. Yeah, that's true. You bring in a different coordinator, you might get different results. That's true. I agree. I so agree. maybe you, you, if you draft Chase Young, you get something, you get some some value mm -hmm. from that pick mm -hmm. if you have a different coordinator. Agreed. Agreed. I just think that for the Redskins right now, they've. I think they have more talent than some people think they do, and I think it's been on display. Obviously, they need a little bit more to get them over the hump. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these guys. No, I agree. You, if, you, if you get Young, you put them on defense. Mm -hmm question is does he want to be here because yeah. i'm hearing that might be the case yeah um and, mm -hmm. and and i don't want anyone to be somewhere where they don't want to mm -hmm. be even though i kind of think uncle sam can change their opinion yeah of course <laughs> money t money changes everybody's opinion of course and yeah. my thing about chase, again chase young i just want if the skins draft chase young i just want t them to be all in on chase young you know oh, what I, I mean? Think, I think and I think whoever they take, they would. Yeah, be. exactly. And my thing is, that if you get Chase Young, you're pairing him with Montez Sweat. That's two speed guys on the outside. But well, what about Ryan Anderson though? Because he's know, played that's a good well. Rotation too. Yes. Great, but he's a, he, to me, he's more of a rotational guy. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. So if you're going to stay in the three four, Chase Young, uh, Montez Sweat. Now that this is this is the thing. I know nobody wants to talk about it, but if that happens, what are you going to do with Ryan Kerrigan? Do you keep Ryan Kerrigan in? Throughout, throughout the process, do you think, think about training him on oh, draft I said day? It. I said it before, and this isn't knock on Ryan in yeah. any way, shape, or form because Ryan is a dynamic player. You mm -hmm. know, he's a, he's a pro, perennial pro bowler, but he's getting up there. Yeah. And this team is – you can see now what they're doing on offense. Yeah. There's a turnover going on here mm -hmm. from to youth. Yeah. So because you're going to the younger players, I kind of want to see that across the board. Mm hmm some people will tell you that that strategy doesn't necessarily work because sometimes you do need to have a veteran or two to show the weight, yeah. a la Adrian a Peterson, Peterson yeah. on offense. Yeah, yeah. But you can get some value for Ryan while you can. Yes, you can. And that's where I think sometimes, you know, these aren't moves necessarily that make you, you know, that, that you're happy to see mm -hmm. when a guy has given his off for some bad teams and Ryan Kerrigan. Of course. But maybe he can be rewarded by playing for a, a, a real a playoff team. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. 
I feel like, again, when you're going to this youth movement, and you mentioned it on the offensive side of the ball, you got Harmon, you got McLaren, um, you, obviously the quarterback Dwayne Haskins, uh, Geis, um, Wes Martin now. Like, mm -hmm. you got young guys now who are balling, right. who are showing you that they have real potential, real value. Why not go a youth movement on the defensive side of the football? You know what I mean? Montez Sweat, you got Chase Young, well, I mean, you still the Alabama wall. And their defensive they line's are, young, yeah, and, yeah, and you have some guys in the back. Landon Collins really is mean, 25, 20, 26 20, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's young. I think that move has already started to be mm -hmm. made. But And the difference is Ryan still was playing at a decent yes, level. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, I, I will say this, though. As great as Ryan has been here, mm -hmm. he hasn't – let me rephrase this before yeah. someone Gets quotes mad. me yeah, on yeah, this yeah, and yeah. I, I got to <laughs> defend myself. Ryan has a lot of respect around the league. Of course, yeah. But is Ryan looked at as an elite player? That's, I, that's I, the big I question. I don't know if yeah. he is. I, I just, again, mm -hmm. you get 10 plus sacks a year and you don't miss games. Those are all great it's things. Awesome, yeah. But give me a guy that's going to get me 15, 16 sacks. Give me a Bosa. Get me a, you know, Hala, uh, Chase Young. Chase Young. This is I, I'll, I'll pose this question to you. It's almost to this effect. Von Miller can have eight sacks. Would you say that Von Miller is more of an impact player in the season than Ryan Curry? Absolutely. That's my thing. You could tell by watching watching a game of when a player is in the backfield 24-7, forcing holding calls, getting there, putting pressure, putting their hands on the quarterback, making the quarterback all get off of the spot. You know what kind of player it is. It's not always about getting sacks. And these it's about constantly getting pressure. Double teams yeah, all exactly, the time. Exactly. So, and, you know, that's the other thing. But in fairness to Ryan, I will say this. Has Ryan really had opposite him a dog? And, a I, dog. and we can't say Preston no, now Preston because wasn't, when Preston yeah, wasn't, wasn't doing that here. Um, but no. is that the scheme? Because that scheme makes the, the, the opposite weak side linebacker invisible yeah. a lot. I, I, I think it's more of the scheme. To okay. be honest yeah, with I mean, you. we both. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the this scheme because, again, do. it goes back to what you just mentioned. Preston goes to Green Bay, plays with um, Smith, the other Smith, mm -hmm. and now is, you know, they're both getting the 10 plus, 10 plus sacks, and they are creating havoc in the backfield consistently. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, he's, scheme he's is being, definitely playing a part. He's being utilized, yeah, right? Exactly. I, I think that's what most Redskins fans are going to want here. Mm -hmm. They're just the, the change that's coming. Yes. And there is a change coming. I'm not saying who and all that because <laughs> I just I can't. But. It's coming. All right, you know spoilers. <laughs> no spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, this is this is my. How can I pose this to everybody out there? And I'll let you put it together. <laughs> I think the guy that's going to be named their coach. I'll give you two spoilers. All right, all right, cool, cool. He can't be named right now. <laughs> Even if the season ended tomorrow. His doesn't, so he can't be named. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And the other thing is the guy that I think they're going to bring on has some history already on this team or in the building. Gotcha. I'll let you put it together. I got it. All right, got it. That's where I think right, they're going. I got it. I could be wrong. All I've right. been wrong quite I'm not, a I'm bit. Not, I'm not saying the name. <laughs> I got it already. <laughs> but I'm also going to say this, and I told him at practice today that I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. My boy is Ike Hilliard. Mm -hmm. Ike Hilliard needs an opportunity I agree. I, to I agree. not just coach wide receivers. We saw what he did this year. Yes. He, he brought on this, – this unit was supposed to be one of the worst on this team, mm -hmm. if not the league I was hearing yeah, going yeah. into uh, you know, a regular season. Mm -hmm. And now it's one of the most electrifying young dynamic groups in the NFL. I think you need to talk about that even more, to be honest with you. I mean, Ike Hill just did a great job with this unit. Absolutely. Um, obviously, McLaren is a, is a guy that no one thought would be lights out. He's lights out. Um, Harmon, a guy that people would say, you know what, we're not sure about him. It was a late-round draft pick. And all he's doing with Dwayne is making plays and being reliable. Um, and obviously, Stevenson Jr., that's just, I mean, a guy coming come out of Kansas. You can we go saw ahead. flashes. You, you, you can go ahead and say it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Lake said it. Lake, no. I mean, let's be real talk. Lake said this. He said this early. I know. I'm sorry, Lake. There you go. In Lake August. said this early. In <laughs> August. Um, but, yeah, he's a guy that's been not just a, not just been playing at a high level, but been dynamic. I think we need to emphasize that, been dynamic. Every time that kid touched the, touches the football, big things happen. Well, I mean, I think you can say this. When his number's called, he's yeah. been every bit as special as Terry's been. I agree. I agree. And, and that's I a agree. good thing. That's not knocking Terry. Yeah, yeah. That's I just agree. saying that now you have two special players. Mm -hmm. You get a third, and this isn't knocking Kelvin. Yeah, is it? Judy. Judy. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's that's you know, what we're, that's what we're and, saying, and, and, right? And, and, I say, and, and I say this not to, to hype up Judy, but it goes back to uh, the Minnesota Vikings, like years ago. They had Chris Carter, Jake Reed. They did, and all of a sudden in their draft, people thought they were going to go defense. They went up and got Randy Moss. How did that turn out? You know, know what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying Judy is Moss, but I'm just saying that they didn't need. Well, no, it's just more need, weapons. Exactly. You can never they didn't have need enough them. weapons. Exactly. Right now, Tom Brady's in New England. I mean, you know, I'm not going to throw dirt on on them <laughs> like they're in a, in a coffin. Yeah. But, I mean, you what, 10 and 3? Uh, I mean, 11 and 12, 12, 12 and 3? 12 and 3. Come on now. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, most people would take that. Yeah, exactly. But that offense is struggling. Yeah, the defense they don't is, have yeah. a lot of the same weapons mm-hmm. that he's had in the past. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you need that in, in today's NFL mm-hmm. in order to compete. Mm-hmm. And I think if you look at the teams that more than likely will get to – uh, you know, a, a deep run in the playoffs. They've got dynamic weapons across the board. Great. The Ravens right up the road. Oh, God. You know, that they have the MVP. He's yeah. going to win yes, the MVP. Yeah. Yes. Lamar Jackson, but Mark Ingram's a, a nice runner. Gus Edwards. Yeah. Uh, then you look at their tight ends. The wide, even the wide receiver that you like. Ouch. Oh, come on now. Come on, man. I said Hollywood <laughs> Brown. Hollywood That's, Brown. <laughs> that was a guy that I like. So, and they haven't really got him going yeah. yet. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's played well yeah. his rookie year. Mm-hmm. But you know that there's so much more that can come from him next year. Mm-hmm. So, again, you have to have offensive weapons in today's NFL. You have to, at times, just flat out outscore teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I'm concerned about, since we're both Jerry Judy fans, <laughs> the New York Giants. I told you. I, yeah, who, it, who told you about that? that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> and, I, and the more I think about it, the just more natural fit that it, it that is, would it be. It is. It is. And I'd be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty worried <laughs> to see him, Ingram, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley. Of course. That that's crazy. I know. Well, you know, every you. time I say Saquon, I have to I say know, we I are. We are. I need okay, you. I okay. know. I know. You know, I know. I'm Penn State I, alone, I, I, so I, I had. To, I, mean, I, I got to do that. I look this way. I look this way. I just okay. look this way. That's all. Got to do that. So now my <laughs> big dilemma is Sunday in Dallas for the Cowboys game. Mm-hmm. Guess what Saturday is? That's the the Cotton Bowl. The Cotton Bowl game. Yeah, it's Penn State, right. Memphis, State, Memphis. Same state. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to see oh, if God. I can pull two off. Yeah, I mean, do both? I mean, it's just not often you get a chance to that's, that's real. That's, that's to, real. to do both. You uh-huh, know? Okay. But I got to tell you, I, and I don't want to say it, but I have to. Hopefully, it's not bulletin board material, uh, you know, from Memphis. But none of us are excited to play against Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not saying they're no good. They're very good. Yeah. But this is two years in a row that yeah. we've gotten an upstart. Like last year, we had Kentucky. Yeah. No one's no, excited, no, about, no that no one's excited about that. And, and then you have like a, a Michigan. Who's playing Bama. Who, who we're better. Yeah. We, we beat you. Yeah, you yeah. You're yeah, better, do, you're better Michigan. That's true. We beat you. I mean, so, you had to say it like that. But they're cool. playing Bama, that's and cool. that's a much more compelling football game yeah, because you have two traditional yeah. teams. Yeah. But I'm not looking forward to that game. Oh, no, that's 7 3. Yeah, it's, 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 it's 7 3. That's it, final it, score. Yeah, exactly. It's not looking good at all. I was kind of upset that we got we got Bama. I was like, uh, Bama, no. All right. So, so, so what I want to do real quick before we we go to a break is uh i want to throw out to you i always try to get people stump people on things all right all right, all right so i'm gonna go your favorite five redskins right. since you've been covering the team all right since i've been covering the team mm-hmm. ooh, and all i'll right. give you mine all right since i've been covering the team they don't have to be stars right no all right that's cool my first, my I'll, I'll go from five. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to be in any order. particular order. All right, yeah. cool. All right, Rashard Ross. That's my one of my guys. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. The Rocket. Uh huh. Steven Sims Jr. Now. Okay. I, I think he's a real good guy. Um. Ooh, this this is yeah. You got me a good one too. Oh, actually, Bostic. I like Bostic. Okay. I All like right. Bostic. Okay. Uh, shit, I'm trying to go back. Ooh, this, this is actually Josh Norman. <laughs> Why you say Josh? Gives you everything. <laughs> gives you good content. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say yeah, he does. He gives you good content. That's con- for sure. He gives you great content. Nah, Josh is very a good honest. Dude. No, very he's, he's a good. He's, very a, he's a nice answers. guy. Very he honest is. answers. Uh, See, for his his honesty, his honesty. My five are gonna be real easy. It is. I'm trying to think of like. Mine are like, gonna surprise you though, because right. mine have different 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 meaning. All right, I'm gonna go with oh oh um, Bashar Breeland is probably my all time favorite. Okay. Brady's like my favorite. Okay. Uh, All right. And my last would probably be, I would have to go with, uh, shoot, um, Dwayne. I like Haskins. Dwayne. I like Dwayne. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. 
So my five are going to be, this is different, different setup. Mm. Renzo Alexander's one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Anthony Armstrong mm-hmm. was one. That's a good one. Uh, Kedrick Goldston yeah. was one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Uh, Darrell Young was one. Mm-hmm. Niles Paul. I know I'm at five now. I got to put one yeah, more in there. You got, you got to go uh, for it. Chris Thompson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Very nice guy. Uh, Chris Wilson. Yeah. Brandon Banks. Morgan mm-hmm. Moses. Mm-hmm. So do you know why I did all those guys? I, why'd you do it? Because they all did shows with me. I, I knew sports it. Journey. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you just like really named them off. I was thinking like. There. Yeah. I was like, Oh, right. I mean, but I did a lot more than that. I mean, I took, Philip I Daniels, okay. my boy. Yeah, huh? And now Philip is up in, uh, you I know, just, Philadelphia, yeah, defensive mm-hmm. line coach. Mm-hmm. You know, so just had a chance to see him. Saw him yeah, mm-hmm. on the field uh, two weeks mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of these guys were guys that you know, would come out and do these things with me before they really made it big. Like Chris. Chris was on the practice squad. Yeah. And my big story that I always tell people is you just, you never know who's who. So and true. I never forget. Mm-hmm. So I used to I used to leave here and go to New York all the time, every week. Mm-hmm. And I did a show up in New York, a guy named Victor Cruz. Uh-huh. And I had a friend down here who her son played with Victor at UMass. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's how we met. He wanted to do this. Places are like, I don't want no Victor Cruz in here. And then he uh, blew up. And they were calling and begging, can you get Victor Cruz to come <laughs> out? No, I don't think it's going to work out that way. You, you, you really hurt his feelings. So, yeah. uh, But, no, you just, you just never know. And it's good to see some of these guys just come into their own. Yeah. You know, and I just I think agree. now, you look at, you know, we were talking to, uh, to Tony Moser, the, mm-hmm. you know, the GM here. Mm-hmm. We are talking about these young guys. If you see what they're doing now, oh, just imagine, um, what's, imagine what's going to happen oh. three, four, five years, well, even with Dwayne, when they're yeah. all just meshing. And what's going to happen when he gets a true tight end uh, yeah. in this offense? Yeah, I, and I, I agree. I think that imagine these individuals now getting those reps that they should have been getting, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, in camp, in, in, in practice. Now uh, they're getting these reps. They're going to be that much better because now they're the focal point of this offense. Like, it's in, it, to me – like, when you look at a guy like – and you can see the work ethic. When you look at a guy like Dwayne, when you look at a guy like Steven Sims Jr., you're looking at a guy like – oh, McClellan was always getting reps. But those two guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really single out because now they're going to get the opportunity to get these reps to become even better football players. Starters, and, uh, you go through a whole mini camp, exactly. training camp, mm-hmm. preseason, and then you go into the regular season yeah. next year on a, on a roll. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when I look back, like, on Dwayne's, you know, maturation yeah. and growth, I, I look at the fact that – I know vanilla. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's vanilla in preseason. Yeah. I know that they don't throw a whole lot out package-wise on yeah. offense or defense. But I thought I saw with my own eyes. Tell yeah. me, if, correct me if I'm wrong. What are you going to say? It just seemed like every game he just looked more comfortable. Yeah. He was making throws. Uh-huh. They were throwing the ball deep. He was making plays with Robert Davis. Yeah. Another guy was kind of. Oh, that's one of my favorite guys. Yeah, so I, I didn't was, mention <laughs> him. I'm sorry. You was, he's actually one of my favorites. Actually, yeah, he's I, one of my I favorites. And I just didn't understand. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. You know, the way oh. they used him. That was a whole other thing. Yeah, no, that's a whole other You know, so, thing. so, and then you think about no Trent Williams, no mm-hmm. Jordan Reed. Mm-hmm. Vernon Davis is hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got rid of Josh Doxson, who yeah. came in the preseason yeah. as your number one. Yeah. So it's just like you you think of this young guy, his development was was stunted just from things he didn't have around him. Agreed. Darius was being worked in slowly, mm-hmm. coming back from injury, and then he gets injured again. So what what you saw, Wale, is that you saw the guys that he was throwing balls to on that scout team yeah. or in these practices. Sure. Those are the guys he's balling with right that's true. now. That's so true. Yeah, and you can see it. You, you can know, you can definitely see a but rapport. It to, but to your point though, like, and you saw it because you used to, used to tell me about it anyway in camp that he got better. He never made the same mistake. You used to always never. tell me he never, never made the same mistake. Never. And he always got better in camp. And you saw that in preseason. That's what I used to always have arguments with people on social media. It was like, all right, right now he's not Peyton Manning, you know, uh, of, of the Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. But you can see progression every single time he hits the field and as anything in life that's what you want when you're starting something fresh when you're this is he is now fresh he's fresh in the nfl and yeah. every game he's getting better and that's what you want and he ended off for the last two games we're not just looking good but looking like a franchise quarterback his last two games before yeah. the injury yeah i mean it's amazing now how over a month's time people went from 
they're going to have to see if they can be in position to take <laughs> Joe Burrow oh, yeah. or, or, or Tua or somebody else um, or, you know, maybe Cam Newton or something oh, yeah. mm-hmm. to he's not going to even play Sunday. Yeah. And people mm-hmm. are already like, well, at least we have our franchise quarterback. Mm-hmm. Everybody's content and comfortable with that. <laughs> and that's a good sign. That's that's a testament to yeah. Dwayne. Yes, it and, is. You know, he talks with us in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's a good kid. He man. really is. You know, he he's, really he's is. a guy that knows his role. But. Make no mistake about it. He's got swag. Yeah, and he does. And, 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 and I he use, knows that he, I, he can be agree. good. And I use some of my friends as like a barometer on the whole Dwayne thing. This is A lot of them initially, like, I don't think he has it. Now they're like, he's special. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, people just want to see it. That's all. You well, know what I mean? Players, the players, his teammates respond yeah. to him. Yeah, they do. And you can see that they, they get along with him. They like him. Mm-hmm. So, again, this isn't push Kool-Aid. This is, this is just facts. Is. And we're around it every day. Mm-hmm. You can clearly see that the light bulb went off. It did. Sure and did. Uh, the last two games, he had perfect quarterback ratings after the first quarter. Yeah, yeah. Two straight games. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. So, again, folks, uh, as always, you can uh, check out this uh, this podcast on Apple. You can check it out on uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, SoundCloud. It's on all the national platforms. Uh, you can watch it on SportsJourney.com and uh you know, we plan on being back out here at Hooters, myself, Morgan Moses. Mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, we had Adrian Peterson come through. Ricky Irvins came through. Uh, that was something right there. I'm sure it was. I mean, sure. when just with Adrian, you know, talk to him the day after practice. He says he's definitely want to come back out, uh, do it again. Just the fact that, you know, and I don't think I've ever escaped this. And you heard Ricky yeah. Irvins, who went to USC, yeah. bring this up. <laughs> Adrian Peterson said he was this close to signing USC. with USC, uh-huh. and he would have been in the same backfield with Reggie Bush and Lindell White. Crazy. Insane. That, that. I, I told my younger brother that, who was a big USC fan, he was, like, pissed. Yeah, can, <laughs> I mean, just can you imagine just oh, yeah, that, that would have been – and they were already a national champion. Yeah. And they were already, you know, yeah. almost had a chance to – was it three feet? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah, what happened was the first year they were undefeated, but they shared, shared it, I it, think. They shared it, yeah. But they were recognized by one outlet and not mm-hmm. the other. Second year they won, they won it. it. Third year they lost Texas. Yeah. So that was a dynasty. But, yeah, he would have been part of that. Oh, my God. So that, that would have been. Thunder and lightning. Whoa. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So, folks, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll wrap up tonight's uh, podcast. Uh, we'll be back out here. You know, it's the New Year's. A lot of people out of town, a lot of people traveling. Uh, if you're out there, you know, make sure you, you get to your destination safely and, uh, you know, check us out. But we'll be right back. Hang tight. Great time tonight. I want to thank the guests that came on with me. Uh, you know, I just had Wole Akinso on, good friend of mine. I remember you can check him out at Urban Sports Scene. Uh, great podcast. Also, we had a, a fan, lifelong Redskins fan, Mr. Steve Fox, came on with us. Uh, he's doing a great job as well. He's uh, the, the voice of uh, Madison High School here locally, so he came out as well. Uh, and then, of course, we had, you know, the general manager of Hooters here on with me. And, uh, you know, Tony did a great job as well. So, you know, we really look forward to getting back out here real soon. Myself, uh, Sports Journey 2L Media Group um, crew. Uh, Morgan Moses from the Redskins and some several other Washington Redskins players will be coming out as well as, you know, some Wizards, some Capitals, some Nationals. So uh, we'd like to think this is going to be like the place to be, you know, right here with us during the off season. And, you know, we've got some other announcements that we'll be making shortly, you know, as far as some other locations, things like that. Some really, really big things going on here. So as always, as I've said before, you can check us out on social media, on Twitter, it's Sports Journey. Myself on Twitter is Lake Lewis. Uh, on Instagram and Facebook, we have also Sports Journey Com, which is a, our newer social media sites. And then for myself on Instagram and Facebook, it's Lake Lewis Jr. So as always, we had a great time, and we'll see you real soon. Hang tight.